The best anti-aging skincare tips from a licensed esthetician. Hi, I'm Jessica Rose, and today I'm here with licensed esthetician Lindsay Holder, and she's going to share all of her top anti-aging skincare tips with us to get gorgeous, glowing skin at every age. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you so much for being here today. So good to see you again, Jessica. One of my favorites. Oh, I love everything that you do with your business and helping women with anti-aging and skincare. And I would love for the listeners to hear about just <laughs> your top anti-aging tips as a licensed esthetician. But first, I would like to hear about your story. I think, you know, people's stories are just really powerful. So how did you get started as being an esthetician? And just tell me a bit about yourself and your brand. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I currently live in South Carolina, but my sister and I lived in Los Angeles for about seven years. And during that time, um, some of the positions that I did was I was a celebrity assistant for a while. And so um, some pretty large names, actually. So what that means was they were on stage, they had to do videos, like, I mean, everything you can name. So we were around um, the best hair, the best makeup, the best estheticians that you can possibly imagine. And it was so exciting for me because I was just like learning all these tips and it really just introduced me to that world of beauty. And I noticed that I was always like, Ooh, what they say about that? What tip to put on that? I'm going to notate that. So when I moved back to South Carolina, I also knew that from just, doing all the things that I've done in LA, I knew I wanted to do my own thing. So I started a, um, uh, a tanning business here, a spray tanning business here. And this was years ago. So this was over 14 years ago. So it wasn't popular then here, right? So I was the, one of the first ones in my city. So I got busy really fast and I was now an entrepreneur. And I noticed that during like spray tanning, all these things would happen with the skin. And I wanted to learn more about skin. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to school because I love education. And I'm going to get my aesthetics license to learn more about the skin. So two things happened while I did that. First of all, while I was in school, I was seeing an acupuncturist and we developed a great relationship. So during school, she asked me to be her head esthetician I mean, as a student to hear that, you're like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, I haven't even finished school yet, but I agreed. So I had a job lined up waiting after school. And then I just fell in love during school with the whole skincare industry and taking care of skin. And I was excited to learn how to take care of my skin because I always haven't had the best skin and I learned so much. So right after school, I worked with her for several years. So she did not even have a room. So she built me a room. I had to do my own own menu, everything. And I will never forget that she had like the top people coming in and, and she would bring me into the room and say, okay, basically this is what's going on her. What does she need to do? What does she need to take? Like fix her skin. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I studied so hard. I learned so much about skin. So after working for her, I felt confident enough to start my, um, my own, like I had my own spa. So I just sold it actually January 13th is when I sold it. So almost one year, um, ago and, um, I had it, my busiest time, I believe it was eight estheticians underneath me. And of course I was the head esthetician. So I've seen thousands and thousands of clients and that tells you that I've had thousands and thousands of different skincare types. Um, everything you can think of ha has happened. And I just love it ever since. Now, since then, I sold my spa. And so now what I do is I do online skincare and videos so I can reach a global audience. So I'm not just um, with my city here. I'm able to reach everybody. So that's my condensed version <laughs> of where I got to where I am today. Yeah, I love your story so much. And, you know, I love how you took it from working with celebrities and then you saw a need for, you know, other women to help them. And you were in that whole world. I'm sure you saw a lot of different yeah. skin types with the celebrities and all the makeup oh, they yeah. wear. Oh, yeah. And then they, you know, you're like, hey, I want to help you. You can like see behind the scenes of all that. And then, you know, with the licensed acupuncture, I love acupuncture for the body. Were they doing it for the face too? 
Um, yes. So we come, actually, I'm glad you asked about that. Yeah. So when I was there and I, I still, she's my best friend to this day, believe it or not. And I actually just got my acupuncture, um, yesterday. I get every, I get it every week and we incorporated facial acupuncture, um, to a lot of my clients when I work for her too. And facial acupuncture is excellent for the skin and you're just moving everything around and it breaks up toxins and it's just amazing. It gives you a natural glow very easily. I actually want to try the facial acupuncture. I've had body acupuncture, but I've never tried it on the face. So I actually really want to try that. So an esthetician is telling you facial acupuncture is great. What are some of the benefits? I know that um, I've read things that you could do like a natural facelift or you can produce more collagen with a, what do you think? Is that just kind of like a hype or is it, you can actually get really good benefits with the facial acupuncture? I, well, I can tell you, you can, because I saw the results firsthand. And so, um, I do have an episode. If you want to learn about facial acupuncture, it's, um, I do have an episode when I go into that and on my, um, Instagram, I show all the needles in my face. Um, and it's, it's really cool. So they're all over here and just they're here. This is the one that kind of gets you a little bit like you don't want to sneeze <laughs> <laughs> and then around your mouth and stuff. So, um, it does work now. It's something that it's not just a one and done. So I just want to be, you know, transparent with that. You need to, you need to go for a little bit and keep up with it just like, but that's just like with anything with your skin, unless it's a true face lift with under the <sighs> knife, you're going to have to keep it up because we age every day, unfortunately. <laughs> Right. It's a process, you know, from what I've heard, it's like at least a minimum of 12 sessions, you know, and it just helps to bring that energy that was it the chi energy to your skin yes. throughout the body, the flow. And I just think it's such a healthier option than getting things like, you know, the Botox or the facelift or anything like that. And it supports your health too, which is and important. It, I was about to say, every time I leave there, I'm so relaxed. It just helps me mentally too. And just my energy. It's just like she gives me back life after that hour and just sets my week up. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. I'm a huge advocate of it. And not only that, and I'm sure you're, um, I, I know you're an advocate of this too, but I learned about Chinese herbs and things mm -hmm. like that. So I take Chinese herbs as well. And I think that also is important with your skin. Um, I have endometriosis, so she's helping me with that and just getting my hormones level. And, um, it is such, it is such a difference. And I'll tell you this little tip, and I know this isn't like your skin related, but so I had a C-section with my baby and the line that was cut, I was still having nerve pain after one session with her it's gone. So it's been there for eight months. And then one session with her, it's gone. I was like, Oh, what a miracle worker. So it just tells me it really makes a big difference. I agree. And I just think that's fantastic. And when you do the facial acupuncture, you're doing the whole body, right? Cause yeah. from my research, you don't want to just treat the face. You want to treat the body as a whole system, right? I believe, um, so she does a few in the hands and the feet, but it wasn't mm -hmm. on my legs or my stomach. And you know, your acupuncture will know I I'm not that I wish I was that skilled to understand like where the body she needs to put it, but she knew exactly where to hit the meridians of the body. And, um, so sometimes you'll notice that they'll, you're, they'll put one like right here in your hand or right here or underneath. So, um, it just depends on what other things are going on in your body and she'll treat it as a whole. I love that. I think it's just such a beautiful practice. So as a licensed yeah. esthetician, are there any of your top favorite anti-aging treatments or anything that you just think are that everyone needs to try that you've seen in your practice and that you do daily that are just super effective? So I'm a really big believer of, well, cause the, so there's a couple of things. So first of all, cause I've seen thousands and thousands of clients. Um, so I think that skincare and product, uh, skincare and beauty tools need to go hand in hand. Mm. So to me, I just don't think it's just skincare products are just going to do everything. I really do think you need to incorporate those beauty tools. We are on in an incredible age where there's just so many, um, advancements at home beauty tools that we can take. And what I mean by that, just to kind of give you a list, and we probably already know a lot of those, but you know, the LED masks are excellent. I really like those. I have both the face masks, the neck, and I have a Saluma panel as well. So I can use it all over my body. It's one of my favorites. Um, I love the, I, I'll give a specifics. I love the new zip microcurrent. That specific one is amazing. It does. I did it right before the show. I did all my microcurrent. I've lifted everything up. I can love you tell that. us what the microcurrent um, does? I also, 
well, we are basically you're you're lifting it now. The um the zip is the first microcurrent that has nano current in it. It has the nano current and the microcurrent. So you have in the smaller current um, and the larger one. So one is you're going to see results instantly and the other one's cumulative over time. And that device is just, honestly, it's just so cute too. Have you, I don't know if you've seen the zip, but it's just like, um, it's a smaller device. It was invented by an esthetician, Melanie, and she is great. It completely sculpts my cheeks and lifts my brows. And, and I'm still having sleepless nights with my child. So <laughs> I need that lift. So I'm a huge microcurrent fan. Yeah. Like lift, lift that up. I also like, um, uh, high frequency too. And, but if, if I don't want to overwhelm the audience, so if I can tell you to start with one thing first, I'm going to tell you to start with home derma rolling. And I know that's scary to a lot of people, but it's okay. I mean, I can show you how to do that. If you just head to my website, lindsayholder.com, I can, I go over all that. But the reason is this, when you're in derma rolling, you can do the home derma rolling. I use a brand beauty bio. You can use whatever you like, but I just, it's a subscription that I'm on. It's just easy. I don't have to think about it. And I know the tool very well. So you're basically aerating your face. And when you're aerating your face, you're, ca you're causing a little trauma to the skin and that's okay. And then because what you're doing, you're helping it, you're helping your skin build your collagen back up. It helps with elasticity. It also helps with hyperpigmentation. So, um, when you're aerating your face, you're, you're creating those little micro holes in your skin. And I love to infuse products right after that microcurrent, I mean, right after the, um, the derma rolling. So you're really just infusing, getting those products super deep into your skin. And that way, I mean, I can tell when I do not derma roll and when I want an instant, like, oof, lift on just everything to be nice and fresh again, I derma roll and I look like a different person the next day. I really think it freshens the skin. So that is my top tip. And if you want to take it another layer up after you derma roll, once you learn that, then add your LED on top of that derma roll. And it is just like, it's good. <laughs> good results. And for the listeners who don't know what a derma roll is, it literally is like this little handheld. It looks like it has a handle and then there's yeah. a roller with these little spikes on there, these little needles. It's, I promise it's needles, not too yeah. scary. And you roll it on your skin and it creates little puncture, yeah. light puncture holes in the skin, right? And then it helps the skin to produce more collagen and elastin and help with hyperpigmentation. Exactly. I just call it like, hey, you're aerating your face, like you're aerating your, your, your yard, when it comes spring, you need to aerate the yard and you need to put all the nutrients into the soil to get everything. Same thing with your skin. You're aerating your skin and you're feeding your skin. You're putting everything in and it closes up pretty quickly. And you can derma roll multiple times a week. And it is a game changer. It really is. And don't be scared. I know that there's controversy. Oh, you can't do it at home. You got to have a professional. Now I've had both. So I've had derma rolling and I've had a professional micro needle rolling, micro needling. And that's when the needles are going to be at a length that you do need to have numbing occur before and have a professional do that. There is downtime with professional micro needling. Um, so I've had that too, but I prefer with my schedule and I just get um, really good results is with the home derma rolling. I really like it. What is the red light mask that uh, you recommend? Yeah, I use Current Body, and there's a, there's there's several that I feel good about, but I also want to recommend products that I'm personally familiar with and actively using. But I know that higher dose is another good one, so mm -hmm. that's a good one too. Um, but yeah, in my routine, when I want to do like a quick LED treatment, I grab my current body mask. It's really easy. I strap it on and I have the neck piece and they have a hand piece too. And they just came out, um, with a one for your, I know it sounds like <laughs> so crazy, but one for, for your head, yeah. but that's great for hair growth. Um, and so, um, I would, I would like that as well. Uh, the Saluma is normally you don't see that a lot in people's homes. Now keep in mind, I had a spa. So, um, you know, I was treating with, so I just, I just had that from my practice and I just love it. And that is an excellent panel. It's a really large panel, which I really like. So I'm able to put it if I have back pain. So 
the light is not just for skin. You can use it for ailments and any kind of pain to inflammation. I put it over my stomach during my cycle to help alleviate my menstrual cramps. It's very helpful. And after a workout, um, I'm into doing like my home weight workouts right now. So I can put my Saluma over that muscle and it just helps with that too. It makes a big difference. So it's nice to be able to, um, instantly feel the results and then see the results too. So it's, it's great. So try those at home ones with the mask, start small. And then if you decide that you like that, then invest in a larger one that has a larger panel when, when you're ready. I always think when you're ready, so start small, do bite size and it, and then just build up. I like that. Yeah. Just taking the baby steps, kind of putting your toes in the water, start with that derma rolling, start with the red light and, you know, as women, I would say most people, I would say, start to see the signs of aging, mostly like the 11 lines, the forehead, and then maybe with the nasal labial forward folds. That's a big one for a lot and of us. Lines. Yeah. What would you say would be the top? And necklines. Yes. Especially with the day and age with the social media, everyone's down on their phone. It's like, just you, <laughs> when you're using your phone, try to just remind yourself to keep it up there. Keep your neck, you know, elongated. Just prevent those lines. Roll your shoulders back. <laughs> yes, yes. What uh, top treatments or devices, products would you say would be the best for anyone suffering from any of the top anti-aging conditions with like loss of collagen, elasticity, 11 lines, navel lazial folds? What what are your favorites? I know well, we touched on those two. I'm telling you the derma rolling is going to help with all of that. It's going to help. So if I could give you a little list, I would definitely do the derma rolling, add the LED. That's going to help with um, your collagen, your elasticity too, because you want to have all of those in combination if you can. If you want a, I'm going to give you a little insider tip. If you want a quick fix that you, let's say you have a party to go to, it's Tuesday, it's Monday, right? You have something to go to Saturday. Okay. So this is a quick fix. So I always kind of um, won my client over with this. I always gave them, um, let's say you have a line you need to fill up really quickly. I'm going to steer you quickly to um, a medical grade silicone patch. So I use CO, you can use, there's tons on the market, so you can do whatever, which other brand that you like. But if you put that on consistently, you start Monday by Thursday or Friday, you're going to plump that line in. And what it's doing, it's starving um, your hyaluronic acid that you naturally have, and then it's pushing it up to the surface and it fills in that line. And that, and when I say quick fix is like, we're going to have to still do the other things, but if I need to get you ready really quick, that's just inside little skincare secret to help you look, um, instantly. Um, so I'm trying to, you don't have to go get a filler that week. Um, I'm going to fill you up naturally <laughs> with the <laughs> silicone patch. So I love using that. Um, and high frequency is really good. Those are those wands that you can use. And I just wanted to say something. I know that I'm saying all this and it can be overwhelming. Like you mentioned that you haven't used a derma roller before. Some people don't know how to use the LED light. When we talk about, I just did a um, high frequency series. So I have a skincare membership. And what I decided to do, because I would have my clients buy the high frequency wand for me. Okay, I would tell you about the benefits. And then I would give them this, equipment and they would go, Oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to use this. This is, this is electrical. This is scary. Right? So I had the same thing over. So I would literally show them how to do it, but then I would put it in their hands and I would make them do it themselves. So before they left, they knew how to take care of their skin. So I took what all those years that it was the same struggles, the same challenges that all my clients had. And so I put it in our skincare membership. So in my latest video, I took the high frequency one. I tell you exactly, we do it together. I have a timer on the screen. I show you how to turn it on, what level, how to ground it. And you're just watching me where I'm not even really talking that much. And then we're doing it together. So it's a no brainer. You don't have to think about it or feel overwhelmed. I gotcha. And then that's, that's just one of the things that I'm so excited to be able to share with others. I love that. And that's perfect because I think, you know, we learn something, we're really excited. We see quick little clips on social media and then we want to go home and do it, but it's really difficult to actually do at home. But your step-by-step -step process, watching you do it in real time, yeah. that is what yeah. is needed out there. And where can people find your series? Thank you. Um, so if you just go to my website, lindsayholder.com, 
um, you can see all the information and things like that. And if you wanted to start with something really small, I know that people also get overwhelmed with, hey, what do I need to start with my daily skincare routine? Um, I just decided just to go ahead and put what I re recommend for you AM and PM. So if you go to lindsayholder.com slash guide, I have a printable guide that you can, it's really pretty too. It's nice and pink and it's girly. You can just print it out. You can put it on your bathroom cabinet, your bathroom mirror, whatever. And you can just follow the instructions. You don't have to think about it. I have you covered. And I even put in, I know Jessica, you'll love that. I love this. I even put in like, do your lymphatic drainage and your facial massage, because we know that makes such a big difference in your skin each day. And those cumulative results is, is what gives you your overall um, natural glow. Absolutely. I agree. I was doing my little lymphatic drainage before our video this morning just to get all glowy. <laughs> it's so important. Oh, yes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so could you walk us through an ideal skincare routine for anti-aging purposes? Like maybe just some skincare ingredients. I know we touched on it, but maybe more like a daily thing that people could do that's pretty simple, but like an esthetician's recommendations. Yeah. And you know, I like how you said simple. I do like to keep it simple for my daily routine. Um, yes, I do have bells and whistles too. And I bring those out, but for, uh, I'm really busy with my child and, and my day. So I do keep it simple. I have more, if I'm, if I'm going to treat myself, I'll, I'll usually do it more at night and I have dedicated days for my longer um, skincare times. I even have my lazy skincare days. I'm like, okay, I know I just need to do this and I'm good. But usually what I do, and so I'm 46, I'm turning 47 in May. And so for me, now this is controversial to some people, but this is just the way I personally do it. Normally when you're at this age, you're not having too many breakouts, okay? Where our hormones are um, a little bit, they're not like they were in their 20s. So I don't have to use a salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide that much. Only when I have some breakouts, right? So, and also your oral glands are producing a little bit less as you mature. So this is a definitely for anti-aging. I actually do not wash my face in the morning. I rub, I do a very French way of, of skincare with that. I rub my oils in, I do a very, um, I'm getting all my bacteria, everything off at night. You can use a satin pillowcase. There's ways that you can do that. Um, and so that is some people like that. Some people don't, this is just my preferred method. So I'm keeping my natural oils in my skin and then I add a vitamin C on, I always add a vitamin C serum on it. I'm very particular about that. It's very important because it's going to make your sunscreen work harder and it's great antioxidants. And then of course, I, I will usually sometimes add on a serum that my, that I feel like my skin needs. Sometimes it's like a, um, now if I'm getting ready for video and things, I like to plump up my skin and use a hyaluronic acid. So I'll usually do like a serum like that. And of course I'll do a sunscreen, um, for makeup. I'm very light. I really like, as you get older, you just, you're like, I don't want a lot of stuff on my skin. I don't want a lot of makeup. I just want my skin to look good. And you just, you want to achieve more skin health. So I usually just use like a tinted, I have on today, I have a tinted, I have a tinted primer on and a tinted moisturizer on. Um, so I'm very simple in the morning at night. That's what I'm going to do. My double cleanse. I'm going to do my, um, my toner and sometimes I'll do a mask. That's like once or twice a week. And then that's when I'm going to do a longer skincare routine. And of course I'll add more hydration. I'll maybe do my facial oil at night, things like that. Um, both morning and night. What I always do though, is I do incorporate that lymphatic drainage and that facial massage. Cause in the morning you're going to really depuff your skin. You're moving out all the toxins. It's going to make you look so refreshed and alive. And you're going to get that glow from your hands naturally. You're warming everything up. You know, Jessica knows all this. Um, you're getting that circulation. And at night, we are we're moving out the day. We're moving out those toxins. And we are just continuing to keep up with that collagen elasticity. Um, and it's free. Your hands, <laughs> there's, there's no cost. You can easily do it. And you can just... Um, watch your social media then and do it, or you can watch a YouTube or whatever you want to do at the same time. Personally, I'm so, I just want my relaxation moment, but I'm, I do it in my shower because I take my, I usually take a shower at night. So I just do my massage while I'm cleansing my face in the shower and it feels so good. I, I get excited for my nightly shower. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, it's me time. I get my me time. 
I need it as a busy mom. And I look forward to taking care of that's myself every day. Um, and, and, you know, check my, my, my Lindsay box. And, um, it makes me feel good at the end of the night that I took care of myself. And then I just show up as a, you know, my best self. Uh, and that's so important. That was a long answer, but there you go. <laughs> no, that wasn't long at all. I loved it. You know, it's like you're filling up your cup, so then you have more love to give out to others. And I think, you know, as moms, it's hard for women. Right. They think, yeah. oh, okay, well, I'm taking this extra few minutes for myself, but you know what? That's just going to make you feel so much better and your kids can feel that. And it's just so, yeah. so important. I want to touch on a few things you said. So one, yeah. you said that you don't wash your face in the morning. I'm in the same camp as you. I started doing this a while back and I oh, just- Really? Noticed, oh, good. Yeah, yeah I don't wash face. <laughs> so I will, if I'm not wearing makeup or anything, then I just spritz my face with a toner and then I'll apply my oils and stuff like that. But yeah, I think it's just so good to protect your skin barrier, especially as we age. Like you said, we lose a little bit of those oils, moisturization in the skin. So- Locking that all in without stripping it away every morning is so important. And then, so I want to hear from an esthetician. There's so many different opinions about this, but how often do you recommend to exfoliate? Because I know that a lot of people, there, some people do it like, you know, three times a week, sometimes every other week. For me, I do it, I want to say once a week maximum, sometimes every other week. And that's how my skin likes it. But some people are doing it three times a week. Is it just based on what you think your skin needs? Or do you have like a set one that people should follow? So you said the golden answer. You said that's how my skin likes it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to it. I really equate with your skin to listen to it, feel it, understand your skin, your skin talks to you just like your, your diet and your stomach talks to you with your food. You know how this food makes you feel, you know, if you need to, you know, add some of this, need more water, whatever. Same thing with the skin. You know, when your skin is feeling dry, when it's feeling dull, when it's feeling like, okay, it's really sensitive right now. So maybe I shouldn't exfoliate tonight. As you get older, I don't need to exfoliate as much. I don't use um, a Retin-A, you know, that's, that's pretty strong. And um, I don't use, of course, I don't use that every night too. So for me personally, I do about um, two to three times a week. I think that, um, that was the number one thing that I saw people not do correctly. Um, the clients in my spot is I saw how many times they exfoliated and I was like, whoa, let's slow down. <laughs> this does not have to be every night and you need to build up something to exfoliate off of and you're, you're disrupting your skin barrier. So um, I'm glad that you mentioned that. It was a great point, Jessica. So I do think, yeah, slack off just a little bit. And then when you do add new products that have an exfoliating property in them, whether it's an enzyme or chemical exfoliating, uh, an acid or a retinol, yeah, let's, we are in no rush. Let's just start really slow. Let's see how your skin does with it. And then start once and then maybe three nights Start again, see how it does. Let your skin get used to it. That's my personal way. You know, um, every esthetician is just going to have a different method, a different way. They're going to have different answers. That's what I've learned at um, like listening to everybody. And like this person says this, even in the esthetician, sorry, I have like a, my hair, <laughs> even as an esthetician, it gets confusing because I listen to other estheticians like, well, well, she said this and then, but then she said this and then this dermatologist said this and then this plastic surgeon, like, I'm so confused. So I decided to do what's best for me and just um, listen to my skin. And if sh that person says exfoliate five times a week, that's fine. But my skin says I don't need it so much. And so I love how you listen to your skin, you listen to yourself. And that's the really is the honest answer. And you probably do not need it as much as you think. So um, that's fine that you do it once a week. Um, and if you're able to some people two or three times, that's good too. Yeah. And I think it's just so important. Just listen to your skin. I find that my skin is happier when I do less, but yep. that's not for everybody. And also you think about it, if you're doing yep. something like the guasa, that is technically an exfoliation using something like certain skincare ingredients that have actives. That's technically an exfoliation. In the face right. yoga, you're sort of exfoliating your skin when you're rubbing your skin constantly. 
what as far as actives yeah. i know that you love actives and so how often do you use them do you recommend that people use them every night do you recommend that they give themselves like three times a week break it up and then also what are your tips for like layering them i find that people don't layer their products correctly as far as like thinnest water based and just as far as like actually getting the best bang for your skincare and not like you know damaging your skin yeah, I do. And when I layer, I um, I give it a minute in between. So I'm not rushed. So I'm not just like, okay, I'm going to put on the serum and then bam, I'm going to put on my sunscreen right after that. So I give a minute. So I usually do something else. So I'll brush my teeth in between or I'll go and I'll pick out my outfit for the day or I'll turn on my coffee. Like I, I let my skin soak up whatever I was going to do. And then I do, I do thinnest to thickest. And for me personally, um, and this is controversial too. (laughs) Some people put the oil on first. Some may put the oil on after like at the end of the night. I always put my, if I, if I need an oil, um, I usually put it on after my moisturizer. Um, so that's just my personal recommendation. That's my last step for that. Um, as far as um, actives go, I'm going to, I hate to say it, but I'm just going to go straight back to really just depend on what my skin needs that day. Sometimes I don't use actives. Sometimes I do. Um, and then sometimes I feel like my skin does need exfoliator. You know, I work at home a lot, so I don't actually do too much. Like I'm not having to, like today's a, a bigger day. Like I'm on video. I've got videos after this. So what that means is I have a little bit on more than I normally do. So I don't just have vitamin C and sunscreen on today. So tonight I'm going to um, remove all of this (laughs) and I am going to probably use, um, I haven't, um, I don't, did I do an exfoliator last night? Yes, actually I did an exfoliator last night. So I'm going to skip that. So tonight I'm going to do some beauty tools and I'm thinking my LED light, I may do some derma rolling. So I'm going to treat myself to that, but I'm going to skip any retinols tonight. Um, cause I just exfoliated last night or anything strong on my skin. I'm going to keep it nice and gentle. Yeah. I think that's the key. Our skin starts to freak out when we're doing too much. With that, what are some common mistakes you see people making their anti-aging skincare routine? Is there anything that you would just tell people like, hey, avoid this if you can, that you see kind of across the board? I think too many products I would have, I used to have a client and they would have, oh my goodness, they would literally bring a bag of products and have so much and they didn't need all of those products. I said, you know, this has the same thing as this. You could actually just skip the step. Some of your products have um, a mix of everything. So if you need a niacinamide, you can find that in your uh, a serum or a moisturizer. Sometimes you can combine everything. That's what I like to do. So less is less is more. Again, I had a lot of too um, much exfoliating, especially from my acne clients. They just thought, oh, I'm just going to exfoliate exfoliate this off. But what you're doing is you're just causing your oils to go crazy and produce more oils. And it's just the whole, it's just a whole mess, hot mess is what I call it. So we have to get back on less is more and be gentle on your skin um, with that. So that was the number one thing. Um, I'm a big proponent of removing also ingredients that I just like to stay away from. So I saw a lot of people with um, fragrances in their skincare, thiolates, sulfates, um, parabens. And so I um, I believe in science. Science has its um, place in skincare, but I also believe in we can have clean, uh, clean science. And so I like to partner, you know, with um, holistic skincare, but also um, clean science is what I like to call it. So I'm going to remove all your fragrances and because that actually can make your skin worse and you're having reactions and you don't even know it. So um, I took a lot of those things out and I know it's fun. You can have this ingredient in the product, the packaging is just fun. It's beautiful. It's shiny. It's like this watermelon mask looks amazing that just came out. But then if you look on the back and it's like, you know, 50 ingredients, um, maybe not so much. So (laughs) just clean, simple and start to learn about the ingredients and understand like, what is this? But I definitely like to take out those. And I'm sure Jessica, well, I know that you agree with me on that. Like just clean, simple ingredients are really great for your skin for sure. 
I agree. And it's like, you know, that fragrance isn't doing anything for our skin. It's making our products smell nice, but at the end of the day, is it making our skin brighter? No. Is it helping with anti-aging? No. So why does it really need to be in there? Especially when you could use essential oils or just, you know, plant-based ingredients. And I'm with you. Yeah. And Um, I'm with you about when you say like the science means skincare, it's like, we want it to be effective. There's great natural ingredients, but if they're not effective, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of our time. And, you know, Right. We need effective products, especially as we get older, you know, in our 40s, we need effective skincare ingredients. The industry's listening. They are listening. It's a billion dollar industry, the skincare industry. And wherever your dollar goes, that's where the industry follows. And things are just getting really, really good. So there's some amazing brands out there that are just doing amazing things that I just, I love what they're doing. I know it's it's become popular now and I'm so happy to see the shift in the clean beauty industry as far as brands are really waking up and they're saying, okay, people are demanding that there's more clean ingredients. Now you can get clean ingredients at Target. You can find clean skincare at Walmart. I mean, you can find them all over line. Uh, Walgreens, uh, Sephora, Ulta has clean ingredients now. I mean, yeah. a few, but you know, it, it's becoming more popular to use natural-based ingredients. I went to Target last night because I saw that um, Goop, which is Gwyneth Paltrow's line, is she's doing like a micro line at Target now. Because before you couldn't, you couldn't get it, you couldn't get it there. I mean, I think it was either on her website or probably more of an exclusive. I don't even know where it was sold. Maybe Nordstrom or something like that. So last night I had to go there and I was immediately went to um, the beauty section. I was like, "Is Gwyneth Paltrow's new line here?" Goop. I mean, yeah, Goop. And uh, but they said not yet because she's in larger cities right now. So I like. Um, put a story on there. I'm like, please come here. <laughs> but it just shows me that those lines are coming into the the larger big box stores. So yeah, they're more accessible than ever that they used to be, which is so nice. You can just pick it up while you're getting your, you know, your paper towels. It's so nice. <laughs> Exactly. I love that. You know, it's just, it's become so normalized now. And with the goop, I think that she's also coming out with a more affordable line. So it can be a little bit more accessible to people. So she's going to have yeah. goop and then the the goop for more like the younger people who can afford the products. That's the one that's going to be a target. I mean, it's already at yeah. target. That's what I'm talking about. And I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know the name of the, the yeah. other line, but it's probably like mini goop or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goop for the youth. So, um, is, I want to know is, so I know that you are also into the whole beauty from the inside out, outside in, is there any supplements that you take daily that just give you that gorgeous glow? I'm on quite a few. Now my acupuncturist just added some, um, Chinese herbs for, um, me personally. So I take three, I, I, I hate to say it, but I couldn't even pronounce the names of those. <laughs> but I also take, just because we're in the winter season, I take elderberry and I also take a liposomal vitamin C. Um, I have a uh, pre, uh, like a, um, uh, it's by Ritual. I take their their daily, I almost said prenatal, but it's not prenatal. It's just the, um, the daily vitamin. I take that. Um, I take colostrum every day. A lot of people may be, that may be controversial, but I do take a scoop of colostrum every day. And um, gosh, I'm trying to go through my whole thing because it's a lot. And then um, I, the, I, I'm very specific even with my coffee. I have a certain brand of coffee that I have because I don't want any acids in it. And I drink decaf. And with the decaf, I have it Swiss filtered. So I use purity coffee for that. Um, I like um, water. And this is a supplement. I'm just going down. But I like water and lemon like you do because you're just helping with remove those toxins. Um, and this year, especially I have just, um, my sister and I have just, we're just, we eat so clean now. Like I barely go out to eat because I just, my eyes have been open to food and everything with food can affect how your skin looks and and inflame things very quickly. So I make most of my food now and I don't use inflammatory oils and things like that. And I think that has a big, um, impact on how my skin health looks, especially for sure. Yeah, your skin looks so good. Oh, magnesium. I take magnesium too. Thank you. That is the number one. I love magnesium. If I could only take one thing, it would be magnesium. What uh, form of magnesium are you taking? Do you know? Glycinate. Yeah, glycinate is a really good one. Super energizing. Yeah. Yep. It helps with your ATP protection. I have to have it. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I know. It, it really helps with your ATP, which helps to just produce more energy. So I can't personally take it at nighttime. It will keep me up all night. Like it really stimulates my mind. I would just lie in bed all night, like thinking. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, you asked me supplements. So I recently created a wellness shot too that I take every day. And um, I had to start mixing them, but I take omelet powder, mm. moringa, greens, like I do a scoop of greens and black cumin, um, apple juice. So I could just get it down. I just do two ounces, but my acupuncturist wants me to only drink warm liquids right now. So I do it with jasmine tea. I agree with your acupuncturist about the warm liquids, especially in the winter. But they say that the, um, for the people yeah. listening, like drinking cold liquids is really not good for your digestive fire. So if you're someone who suffers from any health issues or you're cold all the time, you need more energy, drink warm liquids. It's a lot better for your body. It's yeah. a lot. I know everybody's on this cold plunge kick or whatever, but um, for me, and especially with my endometriosis that I have, everything is more nurturing towards, we don't, I don't want to shock my body. I need to like care for it and nurture it. So everything right now is warm. Like even when I know this sounds silly, but even um, on the cold floors, I usually have socks or slippers on because I don't want to shock my body. I want to keep my body warm and just comfortable. I agree with you. I actually used to do the cold shower after I would take a hot shower and then I would turn it to cold towards yeah. the end. And that was really great. And I would get energized. But recently, over the past year, I've been researching how it's actually not good for women at certain phases of the month. So like around your ovulation or menstruation, you want it to be more nurturing. So right. as women, it's something to look into because we could be interfering with our hormones. Like cold is good, but at certain times for a purpose, you know, men and women let's just face it, we have different, you know, bodies or our anatomy yeah. is different. So we can't do the same things that men do. We really need to nurture, you know, our body and our, just our whole system. It's, our hormones are very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I hundred percent agree with you. Yep. And I just wanted to say, so you're 46, you said? 46. 46. Yeah. You, I mean, you just look absolutely gorgeous. Like your skin is glowing. It's super plump. It's super youthful. And I just think that like all your skincare <laughs> tips are just so important. And I would love if you would just have any other tips that you want to share. Like if there's anything else that you just think that women should know as far as like their beauty routine, skincare routine, wellness, anything that's just going to help them to look good and age gracefully. Yeah, I just think honestly, it's also consistency. So it's kind of like um, that person that looks really fit, they're working out, they're eating the right thing. So I used to not always have good skin. I'm proud of my skin because I work at it every single day. Am I doing a 12 step Korean skincare routine every day? No. There's lazy days, there's times, but then I know how to make up for it. And I just know the like, what I need to do for my skin, but I'm taking care of my skin, but I'm also inside taking care of my body. And I really think, um, it's definitely that, you know, that gut and, um, inside out correlation. So I just make sure that, um, I'm eating really well too. That has just been such a game changer. And when I had on my clients, we immediately went to their diet too. So I encourage you, if you are having skin um, issues to look at your diet first, let's do that gut check. And also if you are overwhelmed with skincare, I a hundred percent understand and feel you. Hey, I'm even overwhelmed and I'm an esthetician. There's so much out there. It gets confusing. I get it. I, my job for a living is to, um, find good products and I rate good products and I like half of them do not make it past <laughs> one time that I use So That's my job is to review products and then also share what I know and, and then give skincare tutorials and t tell you how to do your skin. So that's, that's what I do for a living. So hopefully that will help. But yeah, if you want to start um, really small, just go to get that guide. And then that guide will just show you exactly what to do your AM and PM. And then you can build upon that. But it's very simple, but effective. And that is what I hope that I can um, offer that to everybody so that they can feel confident and empowered and taking care of their skin daily. Absolutely. Is there any resources that you'd like to share with the listeners, you know, about your website, different, uh, your program that you have, or just any videos on YouTube or books, anything that you think that would really help people to just take their skincare into aging game up a little bit. 
Um, I have a podcast that's called Spa Skin and Beauty. So you can listen to that. And I go over um, each week, I go into a different uh, skincare topic and tell you how to take care of your skin. You can do that. The skincare membership is on lindsayholder.com. So you can check that out. Put all the links down to her favorite products. So you can find, you know, her red light, her derma rollers, her vitamin C, all that in the, down below. So everyone can find what you're talking about because your skin's glowing and people want to, you know, take your advice because you're an esthetician who looks really good. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Back at you. You look amazing as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for being here. This has been really great. And I am just so excited to have Lindsay Holder, the esthetician here. And uh, we will chat again soon, my friend. 